any United Methodist Church where God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. good. It's good seeing everybody here this morning on the fourth Sunday of Advent. At this time, we'll do some announcements. Uh, today, the, the, the new upper rooms are available on the entry table in the fellowship hall. And it's also the deadline for the donations of the gently used adult coats, new socks, mittens, and gloves for the Swanson Center. And uh, everybody's invited to join us for fellowship, uh, in the fellowship hall for refreshments after the service. And this week, discipleship classes will not meet. Next Sunday, the message will be lost at home. And uh, it's a joy here to have Pastor Jim with us this morning. So, at this time, are there any other announcements? Carrie? I have the 2022 uh, giving envelopes here. They're on the table in the back room. If I took you off the list and you don't want off the list, let me know. I brought the extras with me. Um, but if you regularly give online, I just took you off the list. But if you want envelopes, I still have them. If you don't have envelopes and want envelopes, I've got plenty of extras. Just let me know. Okay, thanks, Carrie. Kathy? Okay, good good news. Any other announcements? Denise? We passed around this clipboard last week. Um, this is kind of like a little Christmas card that everybody can sign. And then um, normally I would put it in the bulletins today, but I was kind of thinking that maybe not everybody signed last week, and I want to get as many <coughs> people's names on here as possible. So I will put this back here in the fry room. And after church, if you did not get to sign it, go ahead and please <coughs> sign it. And I can get these out next week. So thanks. Okay, thanks, Denise. So anybody who hasn't signed the uh, annual uh, Christmas card for the morning night went to the church, you still have an opportunity to do that, so. And uh, Christmas Eve service. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. Uh, there's a Christmas Eve service at 6 p.m. here in the sanctuary, and I almost forgot to announce that Friday, December 24th, which is also the Christmas Eve, is the lighting. <coughs> luminaries and if you want to help you meet at Bill Gardner's house here in Hannah at 3 30 p.m. and Bill's at 114 East Jersey Street here in Hannah for those that might not be familiar but to, yeah anybody that wants to help put out the luminaries uh, here's the welcome. and usually we finish up in time that you can go home and uh, get ready for the service Okay, if there are no more announcements, uh, let's open with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity to be in your house. We thank you for this nation where we are free to come and worship you without fear of reprisal. Lord, we just ask you to be with us this, during this service. Fill our hearts and minds with your Holy Spirit, for we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, the, uh, we'll have the lighting of the Advent wreath. Uh, Joe's family will come forward. Sometimes when we are trying something new, or when we are facing a difficult decision, or when we want to celebrate something, or when we just feel lost and alone and uncertain about life, the universe, and everything, we need a blessing. We don't always think of it that way, or word it like that. We say we need advice, or support, or companions, or someone to come along beside and lift, lift us up again so we can see more in the tops of our shoes, we seek your blessing. For many of us, we go home, we ask mom, we talk to dad, 
or brothers and sisters, close friends, those we grew up with, those who know us best, we want them alongside. We want to be in their presence. Somehow we know that being there, being home, will make all things better. Maybe it won't be fixed or solved or rushed away, but at least we won't be alone. We seek a blessing. Mary faced, Mary faced with an incomprehensible burden and gift, ran to cousin Elizabeth's house, looking for someone who knew a little of what she was going through, looking for a place to hide until the reality of her condition could become something real, and she received a blessing. The prophet Micah spoke of a blessing coming to an unexpected place, an unassuming town, yet by God's grace, would become the means through which God would bless the whole world. Bethlehem, the little town of blessing, we seek a blessing. We light these candles, the candles, candle of hope, of peace, of joy, and today. Love as a sign that we know blessings, and we know waiting for blessings to be felt and lived. We Light these candles as a sign that we still seek a blessing. It's time to go home. Thank you, Joe and Carter. Okay, and at this time, uh, we will open with a praise song, Hail to the Lord Anointed. It's found in the hymnal on page 203, and we also understand.
ushers will come forward at this time, we'll give our offerings. At this time, we'll share our victories, thanks, and requests. Uh, does anybody have a, a prayer request this morning? Jeff? Yeah, prayers for joy. She got her intestinal thing there. And prayers for my mom and us. She lost her mobility yesterday with her dementia, so we're going to have to eventually get her out of the house now. And we're continuing to pray for your brother Jerry. <coughs> my, my friend Larry's having the same thing. He's got to stop smoking because of his COPD, and uh, he's having a real struggle also. Anyone else have a prayer request? Kathy? Okay. <coughs> I just wanted to uh, say thank you to everyone for your prayers and uh, cards and texts and everything for my uh, illness and for uh, the loss of my mom. <clears throat> um, and uh, to pray for my family from Mississippi, we're driving up today uh, for the funeral tomorrow. Um, that they be safe in their travels. Hi, uh, Maxine. Yes, my granddaughter and family are all sick. A couple of them have COVID, one has pneumonia and problems. So please pray for Ashley Baskin for me. Okay. Any other requests? Okay, Denise. Um, please pray for my um, cousin and her family. Um, she, actually her daughter passed away um, this week. She was only 27. And she had complications from COVID. Um, so they need a lot of prayers, so prayers for them. And we want to remember those uh, that have been, lives have been devastated by the tornadoes and the bad storms down south. As, as we get ready to go to Louisiana, we'll probably get to uh, see still some of the destruction that's happened a little further north of Louisiana. So. We just want to keep those people in our prayers also. Thank you, Rex. My name is Joy. Uh, a lot of times we uh, presented a, a meal yesterday, yesterday afternoon. It was really very successful. A lot of people. 
a lot of food left over. Santa Claus was here, toys were here, everybody was happy. Okay. <laughs> well, that's good. I was hoping we could have at least one joy. <laughs> Besides the joy of Christ. Okay, if there are no more requests, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you in a time of need. We look to you to lift our spirits in spite of how low we may feel. Reassure us, Lord, touch us and give us the peace for those who have lost loved ones, those who are experiencing illness, and those who are facing the unknown. We pray for those who are in transition, that are maybe moving out of their home through no fault of their own, but just through a necessity. So Lord, we just pray for those people who have been devastated by bad weather in this country and also around the world. We pray for our leaders that they may make decisions that would be godly decisions to lead our nation in the right path. So Lord, at this time, we just turn these concerns over to you. You are the great healer. You are the omnipotent God. And you know what's best for us. In spite of sometimes when we do not understand. That we like to pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Okay, and at this time we'll have the scripture reading, and Carol comes forward. First reading is from Micah, chapter 5, verses 2 through 5. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. If the Assyrians come into the land and tread upon our soil. And the next one is in Luke chapter 1, uh, verses 39 through 55. In those days, Mary set out and went in haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of the Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is he who believed that there would be fulfillment of what is spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he's looked with favor on the lowliness, lowliness of his servant. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, 
according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his two descendants forever. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Isn't it kind of amazing the first person to acknowledge the preborn Christ was a preborn child? Just wanted to add that there. At this time, I'll uh, let Jim uh, do what he does best. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Carol. Um, I really appreciate Mike helping me out this morning um, to save some of my energy so that uh, I can do the part that, uh, well, what Mike said I do best, but um, I don't know about that. Uh, please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge your presence with us, among us today. Help us to hear your voice speak to us through the words of Scripture and through our meditation upon it, that we might be lifted up and sent out confident of all that you are doing in and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Can y'all hear me? Um, all right, well, that's what we should do. Bring the mic up. Sorry. Uh, throw my normal routine off and everything just falls apart. Um, so, how many of us um, feel like we're a big cheese? No? No? How many of us feel like we're really important? Depends on what it is. Well, that's a shame. <laughs> but we're in good company. In the uh, scripture uh, from from Micah, and uh, I, I didn't uh, catch it exactly in the, uh, the version that Carol read, but um, in the New International Version, it says, talks about... Uh, There we go. In the New International Version, it talks about Bethlehem being small. In uh, most other versions, in the actual word that's translated small is insignificant. The scripture says that Bethlehem is insignificant. And indeed, throughout most of history, Bethlehem was just a tiny little backwater, small town place where they were known for baking bread and raising sheep. Even today, Bethlehem only has a population of about 25,000 people, probably half the size of Valpo, and it's significant only because of who came from there. King David came from Bethlehem, but more importantly, Jesus came from Bethlehem. Bethlehem in and of itself is nothing. It was nothing. It was insignificant. But being the birthplace of Jesus gives it deep significance. And when Pastor Sherry and I were in Bethlehem, um, we went to the Church of the Nativity on the little tour that we were on, and the line to get to go to see the place where Jesus was actually born, it was about a two-hour line. And this was on a middle weekday, you know, it wasn't during high uh, tourist season. Long, long line. Now I will say, I am insignificant, but our tour guide was not, and he was able to uh, get us in the back door, and we didn't have to wait at all. Uh, they actually made that long line wait while my little tour group was pushed in front of everybody. I found that rather embarrassing, but um, what does it mean to be insignificant or significant? 
Even when we look in the Luke passage, Elizabeth, who Mary goes to visit, her cousin, she was barren. She was an old lady when she became uh, pregnant with John the Baptist. And to be barren in the biblical world was shameful. It was viewed as a curse from God. Though there are several stories in the Bible about women who were barren, bringing good news. Sarah, who brought forth Isaac. Elizabeth, who brings forth John the Baptist. But Elizabeth herself was really rather insignificant. Her husband, Zechariah, was a Levite, and we don't know what his day job was, but a Levite was kind of like being in the National Guard. You served like two weeks a year in the temple, and then you went back to your life and did what you did. So he was kind of significant for being a Levite, but he wasn't like one of the priests. What he really was was sort of a temple servant. And out of such insignificance came the one, John the Baptist, who would prepare the way for the Lord. And then Mary, really, really insignificant. A teenage girl, probably about 14 years old, which was the normal age to get betrothed, um, in the small town of Nazareth, which had a population of 200 people less than half the size of Anna. Truly an insignificant place. But in that insignificant place lived this insignificant girl. But the Lord chose her to be the mother of the Messiah. Indeed, there were all sorts of significant and important people in the world that God could have gone to. There was Herod, the king of Israel. There was Caesar. There were all of the kings of the world, all of the wise philosophers, all of the smart people, all of the people that made the world work and had their names recorded in the history books that we read about in school. But God didn't choose the significant. God chose the insignificant precisely because of their insignificance, precisely because of their being normal, average, regular people. Now, indeed, Mary was faithful. Mary was good. But God chose her because she was a regular person. She had her struggles. She was undoubtedly a threat of her life for being an unmarried mother in that time. But Joseph stood by her, another insignificant person. Out of their insignificance, God gave them the blessing of using them for the mission of saving the whole world. And that is the message for us today. That's the blessing that we receive. Because when I asked if any of us were a big cheese, if we were significant, none of us raised our hand because we all know we're just regular folk. But it's regular folk through whom God works. It's you and I. It's people in the small towns and the small churches where the Holy Spirit moves. It's because we are insignificant that we understand that we are not God, that we understand what it is like to struggle in the world. It's out of our insignificance that we've been given the gift of compassion, the gift of understanding, the gift of community, But God takes the common, the everyday, the insignificant, 
and fills it with his spirit and gives it purpose. We here in Hannah, small though we are, as a church, as a community, we have been called by God to the holiest task that there is to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. To tell the world through our words, through our witness, through our service, through our love, through the way that we live, that Jesus Christ is our Lord, and that that makes a difference in our lives, and that Jesus is significant for us because he has redeemed us. And he has given us this great high calling, this mission to go into the world. And to show the world Jesus. It doesn't matter that we're not a mega church. It doesn't matter that we're not a big city town. It doesn't matter that we aren't the movers and the shakers in the world. Except for Jeff, he was a mover and shaker when it came to the golf carts a little while ago. But um, we all make a difference. When we open our hearts to one another in our community, we all are significant when we let the love of Christ shine through. We don't have to do big, grand gestures. We just have to love with the love of Christ. We have to offer our lives to one another in support of one another. And we have to let each other support us. It is a blessing to find our home amongst people who know the Lord. It is a blessing to be given a mission to carry good news to the world. And it's a blessing to celebrate with each other all of the gifts that God has given us, all of the blessings that God has given us. And personally, I count one of the blessings my own insignificance. Jesus is my Lord. God is my God. The Holy Spirit dwells within me. I don't need to be important. I don't need to be the one to make a noise, a big splash, a name for myself in the world. If I make a name for Christ, and if I am known by my life as one who loves Christ, then my life is significant. And if I touch anybody else's life and bring the good news, the joy of knowing Jesus, to even one other <coughs> person who has been lost in the darkness, then my life has been very significant. So let us this week, as we live the call, as we come in the final week of Advent and approach Christmas, reflect upon the great gift of being made who we are, being put in this place with these people and with those people. Because what is significant is the love of Christ, the grace of God in Christ. When we carry that with us, we can make a difference in the world and be significant in the lives of those who are broken and hurting, lost, and alone. This Christmas, in the darkness of the season, in the coldness of we have the opportunity to live the love of God in Jesus Christ, to share the good news. Amen indeed. Let us now offer a prayer of thanksgiving. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <coughs> it is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. From lowly Bethlehem, you brought forth the great shepherd of the people. He shows forth your strength and your love and brings peace to the world. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, born of the blessed Virgin Mary. He scatters the proud. He brings down the mighty from their thrones. He lifts up the lowly and fills the hungry with good things. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and sanctify us and bless us that we may reflect your glory and holiness in the world. May your light shine through our humble lives. Help us to continue the promise begun in Jesus as we go into the world in the strength of your Spirit, giving ourselves for others in service to you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us now rise and sing our final hymn, The Little Town of Bethlehem. Especially 
for those who do not know Christ. You are living a life of utmost significance because you are reflecting the glory of God. So go knowing that God is within you, that the Holy Spirit fills you, that the Son walks with you. And what could be more significant than that? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go and have a blessed week. Amen.